Hi, I'm Sanjim Majumda. I'm a plastics and hand surgery consultant. And for this medicine in a nutshell talk, uh, we will be discussing digital tourniquets. Uh, now you're thinking, well, what else is to discuss about digital tourniquets? You take a rubber glove, stick it on a finger, do your operation and go for it. Well, notwithstanding the fact that digital tourniquets are used uh, very commonly for operations on the fingers and toes, the big issues are doing this safely. Now the first is accidentally leaving on a tourniquet and you think well that can't be that commonly done. Well the National Patient Safety Agency did a study which showed that between the years 2005 and 2009 there were 15 incidents in the United Kingdom of accidentally left on turn digital tourniquets. Ten of these patients required a further operation, two required amputations, Nine of these cases were uh, procedures were performed in an operating theatre as the original operation, four of them in any NE setting and two in a GP setting. More easily done than one would think because these 15 incidents are 15 incidents too many. These are what you call never events, would never occur. What you don't want is to do your operation and then end up with the hand of a patient with a finger looking like that. This Fortunately, it's not one of my patients. This is a picture taken from the NPSA um, guidelines, um, and I'm sure they won't mind me showing you this. So, how do we ensure that we use a digital tourniquet but safely? The, the first thing, the very first thing is, please do not use a rubber glove. Whether it is you cut the finger of a rubber glove and roll it down or in any other fashion. Rubber gloves first are not taken into the swab and instrument count so they can be easily left on. Rubber gloves are more skin colored, can be left on and they can cause a nightmare. So the, the NPSA guidelines suggest that only CE mark digital tourniquets and we'll be discussing a few of those in a little while and these are labeled or brightly colored should be used. No rubber glove and no Penrose drain either. The Penrose drain can be used safely, but the problem with the Penrose drain is again is quite skin colored and can be easily overlooked really. Uh, the second bit of the guideline, which is quite good as well, is that when a tourniquet is used, when a digital tourniquet use, is used, it should be counted in as a separate instrument, um, if you would, so into the swab and instrument count. The length of time it's used is recorded and it is counted out uh, at the end. So, and, and then doubly, it, it, it's also taken as part of the sign out process, the WHO surgical safety chief checklist sign, sign, out, sign out process, so that it is again a safety measure to ensure that it's not left. Now, I think it's the surgeon's responsibility, whoever is the operating surgeon, to ensure that the tourniquet is off. In medical legally, there's no doubt about that. In a setting where you don't have nurses like I'm helping you, like the a &E or the primary care, I would suggest that for every single operation where the tourniquet is used, please put in what the tourniquet is and the tourniquet time on the operating sheet at the end of the operation. The other bit is to ensure that everybody you know, the th in the theater, including the patient, is aware of the da possible dangers of using a digital tourniquet and what signs to look out for. And the NPSA quite uh, usefully have uh, a briefing sheet and it's, it's very nicely put together. And there's the picture of the hand uh, that I showed you before and these are what to do and so on. And I think this is a good sheet to put up in every um, situation where one is going to be using digital tourniquet, operating theatre, a &E department, GP surgery, whichever. Now the second issue with putting on a digital tourniquet is a neuropraxia or nerve injury because it is too much pressure. So it's documented that on occasion if the tourniquet is too tight you can have a compression injury to the digital nerves uh, and that usually happens when you are putting like a Penrose drain quite tight and you are clipping with an artery clip and that can cause uh, nerve damage. 
Now, there's a paper by Lan uh, Laham et al., um, which is quite elegantly looked at that in the Western Journal of Emergency Medicine, uh, and that compared pressures under tourniquet um, for using the Penrose drain type thing, or the roll rubber glove, or the um, a couple of the C marked um, purpose made tourniquets. And it showed that consistently these purpose uh, made tourniquets, purpose manufactured tourniquets, had a lower um, their pressure and well within what is considered safe. The Penrose drain one unfortunately had a very variable depending on how tight you pull it. And the rubber glove was also could exceed the, the safe pressures. And as we've discussed, rubber glove, not a good idea. So what are we going to use? Well, the first one we look at what here is called a T-ring. And the T-ring um, itself is essentially a brightly colored, bright red plastic ring that's solid. And in the middle there's a diaphragm sort of thing, rubber uh, diaphragm. And when you're putting it on to the finger, it just rolls on like that. So it's got the added advantage of exsanguinating the finger and you get a pressure here that is not too tight and is nice and bright and of course counted into your wound and instrument count. So that's the T-ring. And then you've got these things which are essentially rubber donuts uh, and these are called tourniquets. Uh, and uh, th this is one manufacturer makes these and you have other manufacturers uh, which make similar things. You've got here the, the, the Tony Cot, which is again a similar sort of thing. But essentially you have four uh, different sizes which should be able to be enough for your five digits including the toes. They all have a little uh, a tag on them with a sign saying please do not remove the tag. I sometimes put an artery clip on, clip on the tag but then the artery clip is again a safety measure that is part of the, the swab and instrument count. Um, and, and these go on. You take as long as you take the appropriate size one for the appropriate digit They've shown that the pressures underneath it are not too high. So it's safe that you do have less chance of leaving it on and good um, safe in terms of not too much pressure. These, however, uh, are not appropriate to be used when you may have a wound on the finger, especially if you've got a flap sort of laceration. So when you're rolling it down, it may actually harm the skin which is lacerated. Or if you've got an infection, and because you don't want to roll down the infection, and the infection may then spread um, up the digit. So we're not going to be using those um, self-sanguinating one. So we're going to use essentially something like a rubber band. And this is called uh, the, the Mercian Digi uh, Digital Tourniquet. And essentially it is a rubber band, but it's brightly colored. It's another bit of kit coming on to your um, instrument trolley, so it should be counted in and counted out. And the way we put it, we'll use um, Chad's finger here. Uh, okay, you put it on like so, and then you get an artery clip. Now, it's terribly important that when you do this, you can exsanguinate it by squeezing, and then you pull that up. But when you pull this up, don't pull it up, you know, tight, so that's, you know, the elder, it's causing a high pressure. Just pull it up enough. And of course, there is no exact number. And then you put the artery clip on and that will give you the tourniquet effect. Terribly important that you don't, again, repeat, don't put it up really, really tight. Now, the advantage of this is when this artery clip, which is part of the swab and instrument count, is taken off, the tourniquet comes off. So this is quite a, a, a nice one to use. The, the only problem with this, in my mind, is the variability of the pressure. While our tourniquets and the T-rings are quite safe in the amount of pressure that's going on. But if used wisely, this is, this is extremely good as well. Okay? So digital tourniquets are uh, a, a very good um, tool to uh, use for um, finger and toe surgery. Very important part of uh, the surgical process. Create an exsanguinated and, and bloodless feel. But please use it safely because you don't want to be that person who ends up with a patient with this sort of finger. Okay, thank you very much.